is it just the three of you or are we waiting on anyone else? No, our drummer had to dip out. Yeah. Okay. He got really pissed off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he just quit the band. He quit. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right, that's, that's cool. Uh, that's fine. Um, so basically how these kind of run is I have a list of questions. Obviously, you know, your fans uh, helped out and gave me some extra questions to ask you guys later in the episode. Um, but then the later half of the es- the episodes, we usually just talk about like fun stories from you guys' time of music, whether it's like shows, tours. Oh, oh, oh you know, no. I, I know you guys were just on that little run down to, to see the band squad. So uh, I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure there's some good things in there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, definitely. Loaded question of the funny story <laughs> <laughs> while we've uh, been playing. Together. I can't think of it. Yeah. <laughs> Do it. All right. Welcome to the Beers of Bands podcast with your host, Michael Torres. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Beers with Bands. Uh, this week, I'm sitting down with some good old Midwest emo dudes. I'm sitting down with, excuse me, who are you? Uh, how are you guys doing? Good. We're doing all right. Yep, we're doing good. How are you, Michael? <laughs> I'm, you know, it's Tuesday. Um, it's still way early in the week, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sitting down having a few beers, talking with the band, and that's what makes it a great. Yeah, I already, oh, yeah. I already started pre-gaming, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, all you saw for the crack was just the PBR. I do have this Lineys that I was already drinking. Now, <laughs> so, You want a shotgun at some point? Uh, you know, it's been a while since I've done one, and I don't know if this old man body could handle it. <laughs> yeah. Especially especially not a 16-ounce PBR. I think I would die. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh there is one episode where someone did get me to like shotgun at the very i think we shotgun it right at the beginning to start the episode and it took me like five minutes just to catch my breath after because it was such a cold beer still and i was like why did i do that to myself we could do it again <laughs> it's tempting we'll, we'll see no, we'll s- mine's like ice cold too so <laughs> <laughs> we'll see where the night goes okay um, okay like i mentioned uh you guys are excuse me who are you Midwest emo band from Madison, Wisconsin. Um, I think maybe one or the second band from Wisconsin that I've actually done, you know, being right. I'm in Minneapolis, so I don't know. Like, you guys are so close. Like, I can just come over right now. Like, I'll just yes. through that. Do you want to come crazy. hang? Yeah. Yeah. You wanna come hang? <laughs> Let's kick it. Yeah. We'll be out there in a month or so, two months, maybe. All we'll right. talk about that. Yeah, we'll talk. You keep we'll me posted. It. Yeah. We'll kick it. We'll get we'll get some some beers. We'll have a have a good old time. Hell yeah! Um, but one of the main reasons I, I reached out to you guys uh, is because you recently put out your debut EP uh, called "About That Beer I Owe Ya," which oh my god! Like where where do you even start? Like it's it's everything anyone wants in a solid like Midwest emo like EP, especially like if you're into the more. Um, yelly style of vocals like the the harsher style it, this is hitting for everyone that's gonna love that um i know i fell in love with it i know i'll, I'll say this again later it's only four songs and i'm so ready it leaves you wanting so much more um but before we get to that part obviously this came out back in october it's been a few months well i know that the response from what i've seen on diy twitter has been crazy but like what have you guys been seeing with this response it's nuts. I did not expect it to do like as well as it's doing. And I, I don't know like what what the best um god, what is the word like like marker or like show of of it doing? Like we're getting decent numbers like it through like streams on like Spotify and stuff, um, which is really nice. We're we're getting people to come out and see us uh in cities that we've never played before um which is just not it's like totally out of the norm for for us but also like yeah me as a musician my whole life yeah you know i i mean i know i could say for myself i don't really think much of it and we were like yeah 
fun and it's uh you know it's still fun but you know it's just become a bit more real <laughs> yeah we tend to be like pretty self-deprecating so to have all this love coming and it's really been you know wild and motivating uh, i'm not on the ep really uh aiden played bass and played drums but hayden's still, our drummer that just left okay see yeah now i don't know get this response it's been really cool definitely motivating and just the, I, I think like the, the whole like DIY scene in the mid, in the Midwest, like in this area and the Midwest emo scene as well, like, um, is just really a loving, loving bunch, loving spoonful. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, it's definitely like a good community that I was you know starting this podcast and i finally like ventured on twitter and like met a bunch of people virtually through that and just it opens like i've I've expressed this many times like diy twitter uh whether you know you're repping like uh like a post-hardcore band doing a midwest emo or doing like fifth wave or doing whatever everyone just seems like to lift everyone up in such a great way that like it's not what you would expect uh granted sometimes it can be like kind of a mess but uh with with some thoughts but overall like it's crazy to see how much love is going on. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it was almost like, like when we started this band, when we all started playing this in Madison, but before we had even ever played our first show, we, I started to notice Midwest emo band popping up, like starting to play in Madison. And I was like, Oh my God, it's like the perfect time. You know, it's, it coincided. We, we made that decision you know, to go in that direct. Well, cause, cause Mway, we were kind of born out of my previous band uh, with our original drummer, Jamie, um, which was Meat Jelly. And like, when that ended, Jamie and I were like, it's Midwest emo time, baby. It's, it's time for some twinkles. And Jackson was it, Jackson played bass Meat Jelly as well, um, but wasn't initially with Mway but we're very happy to yeah we we were all all tied now. together I, I played in another project with like two other members from me jelly and mm -hmm. it just all kind of happened very quickly <laughs> yep i think what we all learned is that the midwest is the best yeah. oh a lot, yeah a lot more love to be shared uh well i i think uh i I, I usually always say the line and now I'm blanking on it. Tiny Moving Parts said this one, had this one line in one of their early EPs of like, the Midwest is, is the best and it's blessed me with the, the greatest friends or something like that. Um, and I always resonate on like that one specific line. Like, I've yeah, I've been to California, been to like East Coast, done all that stuff, visited people, but I don't know. The Midwest will always be home just because like this is where it just, there's just such amazing like DIY community throughout. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I'm right there with you. It's it's been wild, and we've been trying to do everything we can to put Madison on the map. So, especially just an emo, right? Because <laughs> obviously, I'm not too familiar with the Madison scene. Like, what is it normally like? Is there a specific like genre that like kind of takes over? No, <laughs> no. Like with COVID, like all of uh, the like uh, venues and stuff, there wasn't like really like much music going on. Um, and then Sue started doing this thing. You called oh, State Street Jams. Yeah. So before before COVID, um, there was a, a really good like like lot of basement venues. Um, I think the biggest problem is with it being a college town is it, uh, basement venues normally wouldn't last longer than about like. Um, a year maybe and it's usually because either people are moving away from college or people something bad happens at a diy show um and they're like we can never do this again which is totally understandable but i've always like kind of thought like you need, if you're gonna do that kind of thing you, you have to prepare for the worst thing to happen so if something less bad happens then it's it's a good show right. um but even even before that i i would say like when when I was growing up, when I was in high school, it was a lot of hardcore bands. And I mean, like hardcore, like like old school, like 80s hardcore punk type type bands coming through Madison at like 
you know, just people's basements and like, like there was a DIY spot that's like a, a bike shop and a warehouse. They'd move everything aside and have a stage. The vault. The, the vault. vault. Yeah. yeah. You got, you gotta be old. To <laughs> that's an old one. They closed down in like 14 or something. Yeah. But um, yeah, after like when COVID happened, everything fucking sucked. After COVID, venues were st- like, some places were starting to do like stuff, but it was like very like 25 person capacity in like a 300 person capacity venue um and there's uh in madison we have state street which is like right downtown right on campus and it's like a open outdoor mall um and so cars don't drive down it and we started we started doing these shows which originally just started me and jamie our old drummer we would just get a permit you could get a permit for $16 to do amplification on the street for four hours. And it would just be Jamie and I going out with a bunch of booze and getting hammered and playing on the street until the cops came and told us to go away. And it, it was a lot of fun, but we were doing it after a while. We were like, maybe we should like start like putting bills together. And like, like four hours is enough time to like set up and have three or four bands play. And yeah, like early 2021, I think the first like actual one we did was May 2021. And they we did them all through that summer and they were awesome. It was awesome. There was like, you know, usually like hundreds of people because you, you're not just getting on, on that street because there's a lot of foot traffic. You're not just getting like people who know about the show, but there's people who are just walking by, um, you know, it's like the touristy spot really, but it's also in the middle of campus. And um, so you're, you're also just getting, I mean, easily that one spot on a on any given Saturday, you're going to have at least like 10,000 people walking by in that four, five hour period. Um, yeah. And that, it was, it was really cool. And like kind of, you know, once that started popping up, I was like, Oh shit, we need to like, finish putting this band together so we can play shows because this is a lot of fun but i can't play it um yeah he was just putting it together he wasn't really playing right um yeah. and and we tried to do it last year and it would have gone really well but uh for the church it, so the place we did it was like right right next to this big catholic church like the campus catholic church um And they had expressed like that they weren't super happy about us doing it on Saturday nights, which I never understood, but um, they they had only like the one person from the church was one of the priests and he came out and gave Jamie and I like, like 70 bucks and was like, Hey, you guys sound really good. Um, Sometimes we do mass on certain days. Like it'd be cool if you guys kept it down. And I was like, yeah. And I, I did not, I did not. (laughs) <laughs> uh, uh, but that was the last I heard from them and then the, my my contact the contact the parks department the city parks department told us that um, oh the uh, the permit that you have is going to be switched from from five to nine to to six to eight and two hours six to eight is not enough time to set up and have like even two bands play and right. tear down uh and so i did some digging it took me a long time i was like it has to be the catholic church and i did some digging i went through like the city um common council records and i found the day and yeah it was it was the catholic church they they lobbied they they hired some lawyers to go and it's just like I was doing this for $16, like every time, all the money that came in would just go to the bands. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not gonna fight that shit. You took $16? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so that happened right after, I guess during COVID and through like, it kind of like easing up a little bit. Um, and from there, it's just been trying to like book as many uh, shows, especially with like emo bands around here and uh mm-hmm. and there's been a great response and yeah we've, we've been running something called homie fest that was we did it twice so far in the mm-hmm. last one we did was 14 bands oh, nice. yeah and we're hoping to continue doing that so yeah we're we're trying to 
you know, at least like create something a bit more for Madison because there's a great scene here. And well, in, good in 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 a way, the the church kind of screwing us over for that that permit. It forced me to try and find actual like venues to do stuff at because <laughs> you know I I totally would have been booking shows at bars and stuff, but I didn't know I didn't have any contacts at any bars. Uh, but we, Kyle and I, have made um, have a really good rapport with this bar, the Rigby, here in Madison, and that's where we started doing Homie Fest. And, and actually, that year, all of the scheduled rest of the scheduled State Street Jam that we had moved to the Rigby. Um, so it it has also like forced us to not get out of our comfort zone, which you know it's always great to you know stay with your roots but branching out is never a bad idea especially especially with art right were you able to work it in uh to the, like this quote-unquote contract with rigby's that you still pay the 16 dollar fee uh or, or we don't pay any fee no you <laughs> get you oh, oh, get, oh no 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 because yeah. that's but that's the, other thing to rigby. the way the way that rigby has this goes wrong is you don't normally they have a large venue fee we don't pay that but we have to like the bands have to like set up the sound and do the sound themselves and, and like take take money at the door themselves but the bands keep everything so it does still have that kind of, it, it, it is basically like playing in a friend's basement there just happens to be a full bar on one <laughs> of the floors yeah there's two stages too so yeah there's a basement venue and an up and a upstairs venue yeah a great place oh yeah well that's awesome that you were able to you know kind of set up this whole like continuing uh showcase series and like once to take the initiative to be like hey like we can just do this outside and still like meet requirements and just do it this way and then you know able to find this connection with rigby's to keep it going um so mad props to you guys for doing that we're trying. You're the <laughs> listener. You <laughs> You know, it's it it's part of my job uh, when I do this. Uh, I got to make sure I pay attention every once in a while. Love it. Except for the days that I smoke before this, then it's just like, oh, I'm not remembering shit. Yeah. Uh, so don't do that. I get that. Shit to say. <laughs> uh, so hopping back over to this EP. Uh, like you mentioned four songs super great it's it's basically like a uh, i don't know if ode is the right way but basically just like a a little soundtrack to like kind of regretting not seeing a a a person in your life anymore uh whether that's like through love or or any other connection um so i mean it's super relatable and i'm i'm sure everyone else that's listened to it just as i have have you know connected to one song or all of them in some different way um but one cool thing you guys do with this with this EP is you have I for repeat listeners I love sound clips and any anything that gets put out especially emo bands when they do it because you know it, it's pulled off so well. Um, now with your sound clips, uh, you use them from uh, the video game Half Life, which I actually had to look up to see. Like I never played Half Life, so I had to look up like one of the quotes to see what it was all from. Um, but you use it in a nice way where it kind of, you know, transitions the entire uh, EP at the same time because you kind of get that nice flow throughout. What was the idea with using those Half-Life uh, sounds to, you know, mesh them with your music? I love, I'm a, I've am been a huge Half-Life fan since, um, since Half-Life 2 came out. And um, it, it's... Yeah, and, and Jackson as well. Um, <laughs> I had never played it, so <laughs> I knew I knew that when we wrote when we wrote when we had all four songs written, I knew that I wanted the "They're Waiting for You, Gordon" to be the first song, and I knew "Test Chamber" I wanted to be the last song, and I named them both because of that, like that one quote that like stops right there and then picks up later later on you had to fucking fight to get that song written. no one else wanted it. i did i did <laughs> everyone wanted that song 
you know, um, he fought and he won and he's he's good good yeah good, good job steve well so the thing <laughs> is when I, I knew that they're waiting for you gordon i knew that i wanted that opening line to be like the intro to the yeah. ep um because it's the yeah it's the opening to half life 2 and that that um sound bite is just really i i don't even know how to describe it it's just really really cool and um the thing is all the i i knew i wanted to put sound bites in other parts of the songs i just didn't know exactly which ones so there was a day where i like i like downloaded all the sound files from from Half-Life 1 and Half-Life 2 to my computer. And I went to work and I was just like listening to every single voice <laughs> acting file and just like picking some out. And I kind of threw them together somewhat randomly, except for the, the test chamber one was the only other one I knew. Like they're waiting for you, Gordon, in the test. I knew that had to be in there somewhere, but all the other ones I just kind of like picked out no, uh, just crazy. through listening to them. but. Crazy after we put them in place, I realized it did kind of like tell this story. Um, I just wasn't exactly sure what it was yet. And um, it just, it reminds me of like, like David Lynch. I, I don't know where he said it, but he said something like, he's like, just do your art and then figure out what it means later. Yeah. And I think that like is definitely how, how that ended up. And I also think, like, what you said about, like, how it being this, like, homage to, like, falling out of touch with someone, um, I, I've never, I've never even thought about it that way, but, like, when we wrote that EP, like, me and one of my best friends had a huge argument and didn't talk to each other for an entire year, like, while we were writing that. So that is nuts. You just blew my mind with that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, overall, like, one, it, it's just such a, a, a fun EP to, like, just listen to and jam out with. But, yeah, once you get past, you know, it takes, like, with anything, any new, like, uh, song or, or record that you're listening to, you know, once you get past the, the instrumental content, you kind of break it down to, like, listen to the lyrics and at least, at least interpret it in, like, the way that you you want to or you think that the, the artist wanted it to be interpreted. Like, it just took it to a whole other meeting. I mean, like about that beer oh yeah it's it's like when you think about like the songs with that saying itself it's like fuck like i'll never get like we I, i'll never get to have that beer with that person again or like there's that <laughs> yeah, falling yeah. out and like you know missing missed opportunities and shit yeah and a, a lot of the the lyrics are definitely about like friends and things changing and uh you know the partners and whatever it might be and definitely uh, yeah the lyrics were all that was all but I, I definitely approach it with like an understandable, fun, like, you know, approach of just kind of being silly and uh, easygoing about it. But yeah, it's a, definitely a lot like you were saying about <laughs> never getting that beer with that person ever again. You know, things just not like it used to be or whatever it might be. Right. But I mean, it's it's a killer EP. Um, obviously, it's been out at, at this point of the recording. It's been out for like three months um and you've also done something cool recently uh you like we kind of talked about at the beginning of this episode you what was it last week or the week before you guys were just down in oklahoma for you did a three-day run uh with tiny voices yeah um, the yep. homies the homies. homies yeah for um, sure obviously we won't get into too many stories if there are any from this we'll talk about that in a little bit but like how was that run to go down and see i know you guys went down to see the ben squad uh and play that show God. Yeah, it sucked. No, I <laughs> no, it, it was fantastic. It was magical, really. Like I, yeah, I was really. It was probably the most successful run of shows that I've ever done. You know, ever we we've, yeah. we've done a couple of like three day, four day things in the past, um, but yeah, just to see like the amount of people just to see because every show that we did was diy and, and on this run and just to get to see the diy community in other cities is like my favorite fucking thing in the world like i oh, oh. yeah and we gotta you know obviously just like 
doing a few shows and then on the last day getting to be with like Ben Quad and partying with them and you know homies there too and it was it was a good fucking run the 14 hour run it was good. Um, <laughs> honestly, I'm going to kick it with Tiny Voices yeah too. like yeah we're there we're I'm plugging Tiny Voices to the oh yeah right Tiny there. Voices I I met them a long time ago when my old band Meat Jelly played with them we we're just a cover band at the time i don't think they even had a single original song i think they were just doing all like pop mulligan and tiny moving parts covers in oshkosh and uh and then i remember when they when they dropped airports and reaper um i reconnected with them and was like hey what the fuck you guys are the shit uh, and now Louie, their guitarist, him and I work at the same high school together. And I have another band with them. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I, I think our first show was with them too on State Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. So it, it was yeah. it was such a good time. And I, I'm not going to get into details. I'm trying really hard to do right now. Under There's fun out. details. Fun <laughs> details. Well, and also getting to see Ben Quad. That was like the reason for the season there. Like Ben Quad, we had. They had come and played at the end of their last tour with Riley here in Madison. And it was a Monday night show and it was fucking packed. I mean, it, you know, and, and they were just really nice guys. And I was like, hey, if we ever like drove down to Oklahoma City, would you guys be able to like help us book a show and maybe play with us? And they were like, hell yes, dog. Yeah, and that Monday night was apparently the craziest Monday night ever happened like it, it was it did not feel like a monday it felt like a oh when they came and played here yeah yeah it was uh whew. i didn't go to work the next day <laughs> <laughs> well so i had ben quad on um i think like august of this year sometime this year and one of the shows that they had talked about was that madison show as wow. like being the highlight <laughs> and favorite day of that tour so yeah, it, it was a fucking crazy night, and uh, they're coming back in a few months to play High Noon with all the rest of the Thumbs Up band. Oh, yeah. I'm stoked. We're going to party. <laughs> yeah, I saw that lineup that got released for, for that, and it's so solid. Like, like, oh, my God. Yeah, I'm very much so looking forward Ooh, to it. And I have that entire, that is the first weekend in my spring break, so I'm really going to party. Oh no! Oh, man. <laughs> good thing we're playing earlier on in that set. <laughs> um. All right. So let me think here. I know we t we kind of talked some sound clips. We talked the, the EP, but like, I'm trying to make sure I'm not missing anything with this. Yeah. Like, like I like I in my mind all day. Like I have all these things racing and. You know, if I forget to write it down, then it kind of fucks me over at this point. But, like, I mean, this this EP, like, I can't state it enough. Like, it's super good. And it I'm just really leaves glad that wanting you, more. I'm really glad that you fuck with it. We had it written and ready to go for, like, almost almost two years before we finally got it, like, all finished and, and put out. I, I think, like, the first song that we wrote on... One year? A year and a half, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, the first song we had written was Test Chamber, and I, I wrote that, I think, like, right before, um, right before the pandemic started. Or, no, maybe, maybe my, maybe yeah, it was, think, like, towards the end of that summer. You're in luck, and Gordon were the first two songs, because I was jamming with those before I left you guys. Oh, yeah, that's right. Jamie mm -hmm. had written the. And I remember seeing you post Test Chamber on Facebook. You're like, hey, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was just like a, a lot of like uh, problems because, you know, they were looking for a vocalist and like also like, a, you know, just a solid lineup in general. It took them a long time to just my understanding speak pretty good. Enough, no. Apparently. But, um, um, but yeah. And then, I, I mean, there were months between all that, you know, them just jamming the songs on State Street and then, you know, me hopping on and then lineup change that we had six months later after playing out and that throwing a hatchet and you know us releasing anything and recording and it was you know so it it was a, a bit overdue getting that ep out there so we uh the more hatchets the more, yeah <laughs> we're 
Yeah. Oh, and I gotta say, when Jackson when Jackson joined the band, I hit up the team and I was like, "Hey, uh, Jamie is leaving the band. Do you want to play bass for us?" And Jackson was like, "Yeah, I already know how to play a test chamber on the bass." So, <laughs> uh, which was the exact same thing that happened when my old band Meat Jelly asked him to start playing bass for us. He was like, "I already know all you guys." So, <laughs> yeah, a little bit about you know I. I was jamming on a couple of the songs that ended up on the EP before uh, before there was a name for this band. Each Jelly just broken up, and I decided I don't have time for this. I left. I walked away, um, and they played. And I went to the shows. I thought they're so good. And then, like you know, there was kind of there seemed to be like something brewing during the COVID lockdown. I heard about all my friends playing these dope bands, writing dope songs. I was like, shit. Why'd I leave? Like, there's gonna be like this boom once COVID restrictions are lifted, and there fucking was. And then I got the opportunity to come back, and it's been fucking dope ever since. And we've also we've also all known each other for a really long time. I mean, I'm too long. I met Kyle. We don't need. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, Kyle trained me at my very first job when I was like 16 at pushing carts at Woodman's. That's like our local, you know, grocery store around here. But yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Embarrassing. Next question. Next question. <laughs> and I've known Hayden, you know, for like 16 years. I've known Jamie for like 16 years. Jamie and I have been playing music in September of this year. It'll be 16 years since we started our first band in seventh grade. Yeah. He wrote Gordon and uh, You're in Luck. Yep, Jamie wrote Gordon and You're in Luck. Yeah. Okay. Very much so well, nice. I mean, that, that's awesome that you're able to, you know, keep a close uh, knit uh, of people that, like, one, you want to be friends with and still hang out with and be a part of your band and make it what it is, so. Yeah, the the group around Madison is fantastic. I mean, you know, so much love. So much love. It's hard to tear away. <laughs> it's also nice to see that, like, you know, we still have these friendships, like that, like friends that we've had for so long, but nobody is still doing the exact same shit they were doing ten years ago. Yeah, <laughs> you know, which which is usually what I the vibe I get from like people who stay in their hometowns for oh, a really yeah. long time. Like, uh, so I'm originally from like Southeast Iowa. So, like, I live in Minneapolis now. So, anytime I go home, like, they're not going to listen to this anyway. So, is it anytime Fairfield I go home, in Southeast <laughs> Iowa? Uh, yeah, Fairfield's not that far from where I where I grew up. But basically, yeah, I go home, and then it, everyone's like doing the same shit as they were. And it's like, okay, like, I mean, that's cool. Like, there's still people I get to hang out with and drink with. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm so happy I fucking left and like expanded. Yeah, hell yeah. Props to you. Thanks. Yeah, no, seriously, like, I moved 30 miles. I live 30 miles north of here. These guys have been mess. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> um, well, like, I, like I've like i been saying, this, this EP makes me want more. What is on the horizon for M-Way? We have a... Um, what was originally going to be five track EP, but I think is now up to eight tracks that we're working on oh, that we're going to start recording in March. Fuck yeah. Yeah, we're playing a lot of it out currently too. Oh yeah, we. I'd say probably about five songs that are on there we are playing live now. Um, we we no, no longer have to do two Stars Hollow covers every set. <laughs> that was bad. That's enough. <laughs> I mean, yeah. so I, I didn't mention this earlier. Obviously, with, with the, the vocal style you guys do, Stars Hollow, if anyone's a fan of Stars Hollow, much love to those dudes. These guys are going to be right up your alley. Um, it's always it's always fun when I listen to, like, a, a record um, or someone's, like, uh, stuff that I'm going to sit down with because I always, like, let it play through and then see what the, what, like, Apple or Spotify picks as, like, oh, this is what we're going to follow this up with. Um 
when I listened to the the record on the way to work today, it like after yours got done, it went to like a modern baseball song, and then went right into Stars Hollow, and I was like, okay, yeah, like this this is this is That's this sick. is the move. Yes. Um, so that I I oh, yeah. start I had never heard of Midwest emo until when I was in college in Stevens Point, Wisconsin, which is like in the middle of like it, you know two hours north of here. Uh, my buddy dragged me to a basement show in Stars Hollow played, and I was like, yeah, that's, uh, it sounds stupid, but that, like, it was, like, one of those mo- moments in, like, a feel-good, like, band comedy movie, yeah. you know, that's, that's what it felt like, um, and, and those guys are just so insanely good, and I, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Stars Hollow stand. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna try and get a little, little clout here real quick, so, there was a show of uh, probably would have been like 2015 uh and it was just like some diy show uh so all the dudes from stars hollow the original lineup um are all from the same scene that i'm from so i got to be at stars hollow's quote unquote like first show they didn't have any of the lyrics done yet but they had all the instrumentals so we just watched them jam out for like 20 minutes and it was fucking amazing that's awesome oh my god where where are they from again? Uh, so Ames? yeah, they they can they go like Ames, Des Moines, um, area. Their their singer Tyler, he's originally from like Atumwa or Oskaloosa. So yo, his... that's where Radar O'Reilly from Mash is from. <laughs> really stupid thing. Yeah. Uh, but his old band uh was like a, a pop punk band, and my the old band that I used to run with used to run with them uh, whenever we do shows and stuff. I just... I think one of the guys from Moonlighting was it was it do you know, do you know the Moonlighting guys? Yeah, I, I yeah. Yeah, small community in Iowa. There's we're all spread out, but we're all like in the same scene. Uh yeah. So uh TJ uh was in oh uh, has done stuff with Stars Hollow. He was never I think in Stars Hollow, but he was in Tyler's other project, yeah. which is like a post hardcore band. Yes. Um uh, yeah. I I I remember seeing like like videos of them and, and moonlighting has come and played in Memphis. Okay. Um so I yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I love I love my Iowa homies. Yeah, so. I was seriously like got I mean, I, I would say like like back back in like 2017, 2018, Iowa was beef for DIY or at least that's how we felt in Madison. We used to go play in Iowa City all the time. Uh, basketball divorce court from there. Absolute homies. Yeah, they're actually going to be in the cities. Uh, they're playing like the next, not this weekend, but the next two weekends. Like back. I know, weekends. I know, and I, uh, yeah, it's been so long since I've seen them. Um, yeah, before COVID, they're coming to play with us here in Madison later on. I'm not going to say when. I don't know if I'm supposed to say when. But <laughs> that's something that's going to happen. Three months. Okay. A couple months from now. Yeah. Well, fuck yeah, dude. Um, so, as we like, I mean, we're we're getting loose. We're we're you know we're we're all itching for these stories, and and I got some fan questions for you. But before we get there, with uh with this record and you know Mway in general, is there anything that I might have missed that you want the people to know about? Oh gosh, um, that I, I think the biggest thing is that we are working on more music, and we're gonna try and get that released this year. This year, for sure, one hundred percent. We're also we haven't started yet. We're waiting for our manager to get back into town. Yeah, we have a to, man to work. To work with him on we're gonna try and plan like a longer a longer run of like two two or more weeks in in august that's that's the goal yeah we're we're not only working on this journey EP, but we have we're working on the third release and like splits with uh hopefully some other bands and, uh, yeah we, yes. we got a lot of stuff that we're working on. yeah it's kind of been a whirlwind <laughs> yeah i think i think like being part of like the thumbs up records family um as just it feels like a family like it's it's just like immediately all of these brand these bands you know that i now know they're all homies now and i i'd take a bullet for any of them yeah 
Well, I, I'm I'm stoked to hear that uh, 2023 is going to be you know a good year for y'all. I'm stoked uh, for any release that comes out, and hopefully that tour gets routed to you know here in the Twin Cities, and you can have some brewskis. Yeah. Oh yeah. We're already planning a show out there. Yeah, we got one coming up. Yeah. I mean, well, I don't know if we can. I don't know if it's been announced entirely. I really we'll, we'll talk about it. Later. We'll yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. it after. Yeah, and yeah, then everyone else can just figure it out and find out. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But speaking of beers, this is obviously beers with bands. Uh, as normal, you don't have to be drinking anything on these episodes because uh, I'm going to drink anyways. But I know y'all are <laughs> drinking. The the viewers can see that y'all are drinking. What are you drinking on this fine Tuesday? I'm having a nice little uh, New Glarus Moon Man that Jackson purchased. Um, New Glarus is what about. Well, 30 minutes from here? 40 minutes from here? Honestly, yeah, but it's Spotted Cow. You can only get it Spot, around here. Spotted right? You can cow only get it in Wisconsin. Like yeah. I'm not a huge Spotted Cow fan. I, I prefer Moon Man or Two Women by them. But, it, you know, it's in it's in like a little farm town. Moon Man was the first beer that I had. That I was like, oh, this is interesting. Like, other than, you know, before that, I'm just putting it down to get the bugs. Oh, good. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I I can't drink Spotted Cow without projectile vomiting after one. And like, I love <laughs> how it's just, I love their beer, but I don't know what's going on with that. Um, I actually stopped drinking beer like a year and a half or so ago for the most part. Like, I'll have one beer once in a while, and I lost like thirty or forty pounds. So I'm drinking a White Claw. Uh, <laughs> I'm just what trying to hang. <laughs> and we're we're having a ruby grape right now. It's uh, it's either that or wine. So, you know, I like lime. I don't yeah, know. lime's lime solid. Yeah, maybe I should have gotten that then. But I'm a black cherry, black, black cherry, cherry kind of guy. Mango and pineapple too. Yeah, and then yeah. I I like the ones that just taste. I make a lot of drinks these days. I'm, I'm sorry, I feel bad for being like I'm not drinking a beer right now. <laughs> we should. Have oh, I I have this in my house. Yeah. I should try a cold mango. Make drinks with bands. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Make drinks with bands. When, when you get, when you guys come to the cities, we'll do yeah. an in-person one. We'll do mixed drinks and record it and just have a good fucking time. Yeah, yeah. Stu, Stu and I and I'm sure y'all we'll make mixed drinks together. Yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. <laughs> Hell there, yeah. There, there was one night. Uh, it was just me and my roommates, and I think one of our friends was over, and we were just super bored. And we realized that one of us has like a little book just full of like recipes for drinks. Oh. And we just happen to have copious amounts of bottles of like fucking everything in our house for some reason. Uh, <laughs> so it's just like someone would just like kind of skim through it and then say stop. And then whatever they landed on, someone would just have to make it for that person. <laughs> Whether it sucked or not, like we just, we didn't make it very far because they, we, they were pretty terrible. But yeah. Yeah, I, I recently got into that. I was like, I'm going to get into mixed drinks. You know what you need to get into it, man? I love that <laughs> Absinthe is that's a fun that's a fun drink. But that's a drink that if if you have more than two of any cocktail that has absinthe in it, you you should not plan on. I, I was driving home for sure, but like walking also is like not an easy thing to do after drinking absinthe. But well, you're still good to play an Emily's. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> well, not 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 because absinthe makes you hallucinate. It doesn't make you hallucinate. It's just really potent. And it has a lot of sugar in it. And I think, like, hangover. Like, well, it's not even uh, the hangover that does it, but like, I think, like, the more sugar that's in something like that, it like delays the reaction time to the alcohol. So it's almost like doing an edible. So it's like you'll, you'll drink two absinths and be like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm going to have two more. And then two hours later, you're just seeing triple. You know? <laughs> that's a theory of mine. I, I noticed the same thing when I had a bit tulips. <laughs> and I had a buddy who his family used to throw Kentucky Derby parties all the time. And I'd drink like 16 mint tulips and be like, yeah, I'm going to be totally okay. And then, you know, like four hours later, I just like, I can't really stand up. But <laughs> <laughs> friend Evan, our friend Evan taught me a little sugar before bed and I diminished the hangover. Really? Oh, uh, eat a candy bar or something. What? Uh, I'm terrified. I, mean, I thought it was like sugar and drinks. Well, that, like sugary drinks made it like a bigger. Y'all, 
You know, you know what? Maybe he told me. My, my girlfriend is at uh, Minneapolis in pharmacy school. Um, she told me, and so I trust her. Yeah, but then <laughs> she told me if you instead of having mixed drinks with regular Coke, get it with diet soda, it gets you drunk. Hmm. Okay. I, I, I believe that. All right. I've never tested that theory, but <laughs> I'm just going to trust her judgment. So then if you eat a candy bar, ask them your diet gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> diet gin and tonic. You're not going to get drunk. Yeah. <laughs> this is beer with bands, not, not mixed drinks with bands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. Yeah. yeah we, that's part two. We went too far. <laughs> <laughs> nice thing about sitting over here is I can just get away. You can just get away. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't have that little duty. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and the, the listeners probably already know that this one's coming. Uh, drinking, you know, nice good old PBR because it's the drink of champions, uh, award winning, you know. And then you know, I realized this after I had cracked it. It's also Wisconsin beer, uh, that is- old line of Coodles. So those are those are my drinks for tonight. Liney's original or Liney's? Uh, uh, I got the summer shandy. Yeah, nice. classic. Not really into beers that have it. Of like fruit flavoring to them, but that that is one that I'll, I'll just pop those back. That's so <laughs> easy to drink. Yeah, I also only had one cold PBR. The rest are all still in the in like the the twenty four pack. Uh, so I had to grab the shandies because I didn't want to drink a you know a warm. I'm not a. I've done it. I do it multiple I was times. Going I just, uh, but I just didn't want to drink a warm PBR at seven o'clock at night. <laughs> Um, but that's the little beer segment. Uh, so we're going to kind of transition, but, uh, before we get to stories, uh, you know, I posted the other day on Twitter, uh, that I was having y'all on and, you know, we got some questions. I know you guys posted on your Instagram and got some questions and sent those over to me. So this is the first time that it's actually worked and I've gotten questions. So this feels kind of weird, but, uh, you know, we're going to do some fan questions for you. Um, I figure we'll start with the, the, the couple Twitter, uh, fan questions. Um, and if I remember to do this, it'll be somewhere on the screen here for people to see as well. Uh, we'll get there. Uh, so the first one comes from at MX Goth Jesus, and he asks, uh, who can piss the furthest? All right, everybody into the bathroom. We'll into be right the back. Ba- I, have to, I, have to, <laughs> I have to rock them. Um, I do also. <laughs> we've all been like keeping multiple and not gone to the bathroom now would be the time to find it. yeah <laughs> i i have a feeling that Aiden might have to i could see uh, that Aiden's yeah. not here with us i've seen this unreleased music video that Stu created for a song titled beat the stupid beak in the vents oh my god <laughs> <laughs> seriously not oh no, no. I, I, can set up. I mean i wonder no, that was a fake. That was a fake. That was I took a condom and stuffed a, a raw steak in it. That that wasn't real. Um, um yeah, that, 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 that never got. Oh, cool. I, um, yeah, oh yeah. I how could I forget? Uh, <laughs> it, it that's a to be determined. Well, okay, I have to report back. I think, but I, I think I'd say Hayden as well. Yeah, I feel like Hayden would just like wild card to have. Yeah, <laughs> to see that. Uh, the next one comes from uh, I, I think it's Thumbs Up Records. Uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, thumbs yeah. Up? yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they ask, <laughs> thumbs up. They I ask, uh, uh, how much do you guys hate them? So much. Uh, yeah. I just, uh, you know, I, I, I play, I play. Left for Dead 2 with them online all the fucking time because I, I just despise them. And, <laughs> and I play I play them in Left for Dead 2 because I know that I'll just smoke them. And I just <laughs> I just want to embarrass them. No, thumbs up has been just the coolest thing to ever happen. Yeah, realist. For real. Brady's 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 that is a smart human being right That's there. That's family right I there. Fucking tell ya. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it seems like a great partnership that you guys like met up with them. Uh, 
you know, we'll talk about merch here in a little bit, or like the links to, to get to merch, but you know, doing the tapes and doing vinyl for this, uh, the pressings came out super sick, so, and you know, like, like you're talking about how you've met so many good people from that Thumbs Up Record family that are just going to continuously like building from there, doing other projects. I think you had someone else, uh, someone feature on the on the record. I'm forgetting what band they're in. Oh, um, that's that's Maxwell. He's he's actually my roommate, uh, Maxwell Culver. We play in another band called Pinswell Here's me, Shameless Blue Uh, we have a release that's coming out on two seventeen, February seventeenth. The year after our first Mways first single came out, uh, Test Chamber, and yeah, he's phenomenal. I, I look up to him vocally. Yeah, um, Max is also like someone who I have looked up to, like too much yeah, I mean, musically in general. Um, you know, I I used to see his his old band. Uh, what was their what were they called? Distress Signal. Distress Signal. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But yeah, yeah. So he he is the person on there. It should really stay featuring and well, but like we're we're finally releasing and all that. But also, yeah. but also we've got on the new one, we've got Tiny Voices. Yep. We've got Ben from Tiny Voices on one of the new songs. Max will be on a new song. Max yeah. will be on a new song. Hopefully a few other features too. So yes. Fuck yeah. Uh speaking of things that are gonna be on more songs, um, Someone, uh, a question from the Instagram uh, is, will you sample more Half-Life? Uh, maybe. 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 We we have plans to sample other things for yeah, the this, upcoming release that we have. This, and this, other stuff for a few other songs. But, yeah, um, this, new e- this new EP definitely has what we had originally intended to um have an homage to and it should be quite obvious and it has it has very much so to do with the name of our band so yeah take that how you will yeah <laughs> my mind's racing and i really want to ask that follow-up question but i'm gonna i want to keep the listeners uh wanting more and i'm not gonna ask it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i'm here for it um all right so another one from uh instagram this one should be pretty easy for you guys uh what day is it Oh, I asked that because <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's because I posted it yesterday on Instagram. Like, oh, I did it now. Okay, I had no idea why it was a thing. I, I, I honestly like read that and I was like, what the fuck do you mean, Jackson? And then obviously, yeah, it's all coming together for me now. Yeah, I posted the question thing on the wrong day. I thought it was, it, it was Monday. It's Monday. Right? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's so that's, that's the term. It's Tuesday today, right? No, no, no. Really? Of course not. It's fucking Tuesday today. I swear to God, it is. <laughs> it's yeah, it's Tuesday today. It's oh, great. Funny. I was not expecting it to be actually one of you guys sitting on the couch asking. That. <laughs> that's <hilarious. laughs> we should have just all asked our own questions. You know? Uh, someone asked. Uh, what tuning is that guitar in? Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> C sharp, G sharp, C sharp, G sharp, C, D sharp. Right. It, it's it's D A E A C sharp E, but it's uh, dropped down. That's also confusing. That's no, like, that's a very popular tuning. I hear that they'll be like, oh yeah, 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 sure. yeah I know that. I don't, yeah. I don't even remember yeah. what band I got that tuning for Test Chamber from because it wasn't Stars Hollow because I got I got the yeah, everything tuning. else from I got the tuning for Chicken Cock from Stars Hollow because I had just learned how to play tactical. Which is like the same tuning minus one, one string is just like yeah. kind of but there was there was another stuff. band I don't I just looked up like Midwest emo tunings and songs that they are in, so I could learn the song. And be like, okay, now I know chords. I, I'm uh, I'm I'm artistic thief. Wow, <laughs> let's just say that. Um, someone asked, uh, who has the most swagger in the band? Stu, easy. I don't like to toot my own horn, but 
he, he was wearing like a full like it was like a blue suit with like yellow flowers like a complete suit during the ben quad show yeah <laughs> I, I i don't know about you jackson but i feel comfortable yeah i can go a couple ways with it i can agree with Stu with style i also think hayden's like kind of quiet presence is kind of you know, it emits some swagger as well. Yeah, if we're not talking like style, style, yeah, but like, you know, like, mm-hmm. your style is kind of with a lot of things. And swagger and involves all of them. <laughs> uh, yeah, Hayden, Hayden with like the, the swagger personality. Stu with the the looks. <laughs> <laughs> He'll wear like a, a like what is what is it like a fur? Oh, my fur coat. Yeah, <laughs> I, I you know I need to wear the fur coat. Yeah. I need to pull that out of storage because that kind of goes up. Maybe I'll wear that at the gel on Saturday. There you I go. Think, I think I'm there you yeah, go. see, like nobody could pull that off. So that's why my gut reaction. I, I, I hate wearing it. <laughs> the problem is, like, wearing, wearing the fur coat out to like the bar or a show or something is, is awesome. But then when you like get to the bar and it's like, what am I going to do with this jacket? Just sweat my ass off and just, like, <laughs> with it on. Like, I can't take it off. <laughs> You know, that, I mean that is that that's just the the downfall of looking good. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Got to stink to look good. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you guys think of Springfield, Missouri? This fucking it's so cool. Me. Oh my god, it I, was crazy. I was in a bad mood. That was you know what? Mood. <laughs> and that show was sick. Everyone. Yeah, it, they yeah. have a great scene out there. We're definitely trying to go back. It was a fucking great, great time. It lifted my spirits. Yeah, yeah. I, what we, did we, we didn't go to the cabin that night. No, it was the night before we were in the we were in a cabin. Yeah, yeah. we were all ten of us were in a cabin. Tangent. We were single room the cabin. night before, and I stayed up all night. Bothered. No, I didn't stay up all night. Oh, I bothered everybody a little too late. It, it we we were like, what are we gonna do? And we were like talking about getting a hotel, and then we were like, you know, what if we like got something like like a cabin? And it was like three miles of gravel to get out there, and it's like literally, it it was like probably like what I, I might be. It was tiny. It, it was, was like four hundred and like ten of us in there, and mm-hmm. one room, and out in the middle of nowhere, and we were all freaking out a little bit, but I, it. Yeah, it was yeah. cool. Yeah. Cool. And but it, Springfield, and Springfield was was really cool. Um, yeah, there were a lot of high schoolers at that show, which was strange. But it was an all ages venue, so I guess. And yeah, they were very into it. It was packed. It was great. Yeah, yeah. great place. I'm back in Springfield. Yup. <laughs> uh, Lunar Moth Band asks, go to beer and weed strain combo to get into the Q zone. Oh, oh fucking, that's a Jackson take. I'm only in the Q zone. If I'm going to do anything, it better be in the Q zone. <laughs> However, I've learned a combination of both of them, which is hard to avoid. You know, it's, it's problematic. So I, I try to attract my nights for drinking and my nights for... But, <laughs> what was the question again? Me the <laughs> what combination of which, which, which kind of beer and which... Yeah, of weed. I guess I like tequilas better, um, and uh, beer, really anything. Um, you know, I, I had a phase with dark beers, really not uh, the porters or stouts right now, but any other kind of beer is good. Uh, tequila, ganj, is good. Okay. <laughs> I don't really smoke or drink beer, so I, I'm coming after the Gage of Lunar Moth. It's on site right now. This is flat. <laughs> don't put me on the spot like this, though. So. Yeah, I don't. I don't really smoke that much anymore and when i when i am drinking i try not to smoke because it just is not a good it doesn't do me well (laughs) i'm getting old um and then the last one that we'll go with uh before we kind of transition is from growler band uh tennessee they ask what is the best what is the best band that sucks ass Ooh. That's tough because you got a compliment and insult in the same time. Yeah. Uh, should we should we go with close friends? Or oh, self, well, we're self-deprecating. I, I was gonna say I was gonna say like 
Red Hot Chili Peppers because they're just so, their music is so fucking terrible. So bad, but they're like a big name. Everybody, Hayden, Hayden our drummer, if, if he were here right now, would, would be up in the arms yeah. um, about uh, that. I think they're pretty good. Something about them isn't that cool. Uh, Blood Sugar Sex Magic like meant a lot to me, and I think it's a dope ass album. And even after that, they're more popular hits, so they're fun to listen to. But I was really into their their first album. My parents had that on um, on their shelf growing up. I think they peaked with Blood Sugar Sex Magic. That's that's. Good. I mean, yeah, I really liked it in high school, but I'm not <laughs> 15 anymore. So I <laughs> think you did. It's got a lot of hate. Anyway, um, the best band that sucks, Tiny Voices. They don't suck though. That's yeah, that's problem. I can't. I can't. Like, I can't either. Just, no, it, it would do the same thing to us. It would do the same thing to us. No remorse. No, 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 kind of. Okay. All right. All right. You know what? I'm, you know what I'm gonna say? I'm gonna say Meat Jelly because Meat yeah, Jelly. Meat Jelly's like was Meat Jelly sucks. That was like our. That was our whole thing. Meat yeah. Jelly sucks. That we purposefully us. told people that we were a crust punk band. <laughs> and, and then crust punks would come to together and we just were not a crust punk band and they beat this up. They're a <laughs> screamo blues. Uh, post hardcore. Post hardcore. Yeah. Meat Jelly. There's your. <laughs> and then yeah. Blues Yep. Yeah. What, a, what a great answer. We were both <laughs> the third best blues band. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So that'll wrap it up for those questions. Now we're getting into my favorite part of the episode. Uh, I know we talked about this at the beginning. But this is the story part of the episode where we just talk about your fun stories from your time of music, whether it shows. I'm tours. gonna go see you really quick. I'll be right back. Oh, I wish that was me. Why, why are you gonna leave? <laughs> and yeah, house, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, since we were talking about the weekender, uh, one of the more memorable things that I can think of. It was all memorable, uh, but we get to the Ben Quad house and I, I think it was Edgar. I, I'm not exactly positive, but was like, yeah, Louie, if you can't get 98% on Blood for the Blood God on, uh, it's a uh, rock band, rock band. Um, then you have to take what, I think it was like five shots back to back or something. I might be blown out of proportion. If any of the tiny yeah, voices are Ben yeah all right fine. yeah five shots and you're gonna have to take back to back and louis louis a small person i was like i i, I don't want to have to drive him to the hospital tonight and he's sitting there and he's playing it and you know i think his first time he got 96 or 97 percent on it on expert crazy he's he's just really good at that kind of thing and um needless to say i think his last he, he got like a few extra tries because naturally i mean Five shots. I, who knows? But there's a video somewhere of it. Uh, he got 97% students by 1%. And uh, we, uh, I think we ended up giving him two shots. And then the last shot was water that I just threw all over him. And yeah. So <laughs> we, we didn't do that to him. There's a video of that too. But uh, <laughs> for anyone that doesn't know, Ben Quan, so fucking dope. Your song is on. That's <laughs> <laughs> killer. Story? Um, you know, there's just so many. Um, I, I think one that definitely comes just off the top of my head was not an anyway related thing, but it is very funny about Madison DIY. And it was, uh, we were playing, I was playing a show. This was like 2017 or 2018. I was playing a show in someone's basement and our singer sparked up a joint during the set in this guy's basement and I thought it was I thought it was a cigarette and I was like oh shit I'm gonna smoke a cigarette down here too <laughs> so I smoked a cigarette down there and then after I was done with it like the guy who lived there was like what the fuck are you doing don't <laughs> smoke a cigarette in my basement and then after that, oh that, my same, that same <laughs> this is a real good look so there's a snapchat somewhere and it was just one of the funniest things I could find um i was like taking it we were about to but one of the, the last band was playing in the basement and i was taking a piss on the side of the house 
And I didn't realize it. As you do. It. As you do. I didn't yeah. realize it, but I was pissing into one of those like little like things that like lead into the basement. Like, the oh, window, like the yeah, like the, the escape basement. window and everything. Yeah, the window to the basement was open, and my piss was splashing into the basement, and I like freaked out i was so upset with myself and i like freaked out and i just ran off like i was like we gotta go right now i just pissed into an open window and i was <laughs> kicked by somebody but now we're all reformed we've done that kind of shit now we're <laughs> oh, yeah, not, i'm not i'm not 20 i'm not 23 but, you know. uh, yeah jeez great moment in diy right there to tell you what <laughs> I'm gonna change onto a basement. Yeah, oh, that, was that, a, was, that was a. That was a. That was yeah. Jackson, we were playing in in Chicago in a basement. This was an M way. This was oh, not M way. You do not do those things. You you can still book us. We won't bring chainsaws. We won't pee in your window. No one will get me. Or any carbon monoxide poison if you play in your basement. <laughs> yeah, promises. Well, yeah, it was Jackson. Jackson brought a chainsaw without like the chain on it and played his bass part, just the rhythm part, by revving the chainsaw for one of our songs. I almost, I, I thought I was going to faint because there were no open windows in the basement. There were no open windows for people to piss through. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what was the prompt? <laughs> what was the prompt again? What was, what's your best story about pissing in the basement and yeah, um, like it's crazy. You're the only one that's ever gotten it right on on the nose. Like that's what I ask every time. Everyone's <laughs> like, "Oh, we don't want to talk about piss stories." I'm listening to the next one. <laughs> I'm making sure. I'm fact checking. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think about like crazy stories with with Amway shows. I I, I feel like they're. I feel like we gotta hit. I feel like give it give it. You know, another six months of maybe. Maybe we'll have some crazier ones. I, we're all much older. We're all 28 <laughs> now. We, we need no harm. <laughs> no chainsaws. <laughs> all right. So what I'll do is I'll ask you this. I know it's still kind of early in this M-Way uh, life so far. You guys, you know, the EP has been out for a few months. But uh, what's been like your favorite moment of being in M-Way so far? Wow. Jeez. Should have thought about that last night. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's tough to like pinpoint a, a favorite like moment or um, portion of like doing this, but you know, personally, it's uh, kind of been like something that's kept me going. And I've definitely seen shows where it's like, you know, I, uh, you know, we all go through like rough times and stuff and there's definitely been enough shows where it's like, or moments and that I've had personally where it's been like the only thing kind of keeping me going, you know, so. Oh, you know what? I've got one. I, yeah. The you got first, the moment? The first show that we played with Jackson on bass was at a place called the Annex here in Madison. And, you know, it was kind of a shitty show because it was like the three... I'm not okay. I'm not gonna go into detail. It was kind of a shitty show for us, but there was like 250 people there, and the stage was like very. It was high up, and you know we were playing, and I was standing there thinking like, what if Kyle just ran sprinted past me and just staged him? That'd be cool as fuck. And no sooner does Kyle just fucking just dive into the crowd. And it was the coolest thing I've ever fucking seen. That was that was that was like I haven't heard that. <laughs> that was like, damn, that was really cool. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah, no, there's been a lot of great moments, and it's all kind of been blindsiding, at least personally for me. So it's yeah, it's it's, it's hard to pinpoint such a uh, tough. I don't know. It's a it's a tough question, but yeah. even just you know, getting on thumbs up and. Uh, being able to play these cool shows and meeting new people and it, it's it's been a pleasure
Anything you wanted to add, Jackson? Um, yeah, uh, hard for me to pinpoint a favorite moment too, but I think we're all uh, familiar with uh, struggling, uh, or, you know, whatever. Struggling, I don't like that word, but you know, playing music for ourselves, for our friends, um, and uh, to all of a sudden have like a reliable response, especially from Madison, and just people that are showing up and having fun and and uh, showing some love, uh, you know, you know, not just for us, but for, for all the bands that come out, uh, it's like really remarkable to me. I, you know, it's it's, it's a yeah, it's inspiring and a lot of fun. Yeah. To pick a favorite moment is hard, but um, to, I can definitely appreciate just the, the consistency of good moments. Yeah, I think being able to provide a good time for people. We are an adult entertainment service. We are. <laughs> but I didn't it does that. say that. <laughs> but that, I, I do. I think, I think being able to like provide a good time for people... Like I've had plenty of good times in my life and most of them are when I'm playing shows um, to know that other people like feel that way when we play music is like, really? <laughs> yeah. And well, and it looks, looks funny. They got me thinking now. I, I think, I don't know what moment it was exactly or a conglomerate of different moments, but like, I, I think around like, some of the first times where I heard people like in my face also like yelling the same way I'm singing and um that that to me is just you know or there's been moments where it's like I don't you know feeling like it, everyone's kind of like singing with me or whatever it's just, I, I've never experienced something anywhere near that feeling it always just makes me really emotional and uh you know uh some of those songs uh all of them, you know, it just it means a lot to me. You know, very personal experiences. And, uh, it it's crazy. I I can't even describe it. Like I I know I've had a few at this point, but it's just like making me tear up a little bit. <laughs> you know. I mean, that's my goal. You know, get get some uh, alcohol in all of you. you. Get you nice and loose, and then yeah. Why you gotta make me emotional? emotional. <laughs> yeah. What the hell? <laughs> hey, we gotta put the emo in in uh, Midwest emo right now. That's that's oh, what we're oh, doing. Yeah. We're gonna cry. <laughs> I, I've been on the verge of tears a couple of times during this interview. Now <laughs> yeah, you get me pretty close to yours. What, are we gonna shotgun? No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So one, uh, we are probably not gonna shotgun. All I got left is a glass bottle, so you know, can't really, <laughs> can't really puncture. Uh, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, like I'm happy that you guys are getting to experience all these all these wonderful moments, and I I hope that you know, more ex amazing moments keep uh, happening for you. Um, I really do love this EP and I'm really stoked to see what comes next uh, for like the next uh, EP or, or if there's a full length or, or even the splits that you guys were kind of hinting at, like, I'm sure it's all going to be sick and, and I'm very stoked to see it. Thank you. No, thank, thank you. you so much. No, I, I really appreciate it. it. It means a lot. And even that you just like dig us in anyway, it's just massive i mean just makes my night you have no idea this has also been the best interview we've ever had yeah you're well, very good at what you do yeah 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 thank you not not on our end but <laughs> <laughs> no seriously uh well thank you I, I appreciate that uh you know it's it's always fun when people are like down to just sit down and like bullshit and talk about you know Hell their yeah. band and their music and just fucking ramble so it, it means the world that anyone's down to do these next to actually playing the music bullshitting about anything yeah <laughs> with other musicians and that's yeah that's the next best thing no we're, we're gonna have doing. a beer together i i will drink a beer with you <laughs> oh yeah i, okay. I will okay. i'll actually drink a beer <laughs> okay yeah, it's gonna happen it's gonna happen it's the okay we'll talk we'll make it work we'll make yeah, it yeah 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 um, <laughs> Now, like like I did mention earlier, um, you do have the tapes and vinyl. I th think you saw some of both uh, last I checked, right? It's not yes, I thing. believe there is like limited quantities of e shop thumbs up currently. Um, and we also have, we have tapes in our own hands as well. Yeah, for we people who are at shows we print all of our own merch in our basements. 
future um, future wise yeah okay. like like teachers are not physical I, I guess it's, i don't know not uh, but you know um yeah yeah so <laughs> yeah so that's that's what's out there right now stuff on um so uh if anyone's looking for for music obviously we just mentioned where you can find some merch but if anyone's looking for music or mway in general where can they find you guys mway 608 on every social media thing yeah yeah pretty e -M -W -A -Y 608 and then our our band camp is just mway.bandcamp.com yes it's 608 08 <laughs> <laughs> i know i uh, yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to be clear about it. Yeah. And uh, depending on where you found this episode, whether it's, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, or YouTube now, you know, seeing these lovely faces that I get to see, uh, make sure you hit those hyperlinks down below. Go follow Mway. Excuse me. Who are you? On, uh, on all the social media platforms. Stay up to date on everything they have going on. That way you can be ready for, you know, EP2, LP1 uh split one two and then you know the, the possibilities are endless um uh like we kind of mentioned you guys have that thumbs up records uh kind of uh show fest. uh fest um when when is that again march 25th yep March 25th at the high noon saloon in madison wisconsin yep well, if anyone's if anyone's in the area make sure you go hit that up uh, i'll try and put a link to that uh down below where you can possibly go find some tickets um you know but i mean all around thank thank you to the three of you for taking the time out of your tuesday to you know sit down with a uh, little old me and, and and uh and bullshit about your band like i had a great fucking time oh likewise thank, no, thank you for you having so us much. yeah thank you for having us well uh you know m way 2023 see where it goes and uh you know i think that's gonna end it for this episode and i'll catch everyone on the next one yeah. see you Peace. Peace. Peace.